allow me to regale you, dear viewers, with the story of these fine gentlemen and fine gentle lady that I happen to call my friends. In the interest of protecting their identities, we are going to call them Cal Do, Carl O, and Corks. These fine people reckon themselves quite the connoisseurs of the fine art of hot cuisine. It's not uncommon to hear them talk about how true pesto is made with pinions and not almonds, or about how Pinot Noir is just the right wine to go with your filet mignon. Oh, but I have seen them, friends. I have seen them with these two eyes, engaging in eating practices, which include, but are not limited to, chewing with their mouth open, shuffling two greasy cheeseburgers into one as though they were a deck of cards because one greasy cheeseburger is not enough, and chugging Pepsi straight out of a two-liter bottle, and then burping loudly with gusto after the experience. Fine gentleman and a fine gentle lady indeed. Oh, but make no mistake about it, I don't take anything away from these friends. I do not doubt their appreciation for camembert cheese gratinated with honey and nuts, or fine Turkish baklava made with proper butter and walnuts and pistachio instead of low-grade oil and peanuts. I understand why they don't eat these fancy meals every day, though. Having dishes such as these for lunch every day would strip them of their status as delicacies and render them mundane. I suppose that's the same reason why ever so often, after playing through tons of games of all qualities and genres, we tend to circle back to games like Baldur's Gate 2 or the first Doom. And unlike my exquisite friends, I may not know a delicacy from a beggar's ass when it comes to food. Food, but I don't fuck around with my video games, and that's why I'm here on this Yo Gamer Recommends occasion to talk to you about Citizen Sleeper, quite possibly this year's overlooked beluga caviar in the world of video games, at least in the writing department. Citizen Sleeper is a combatless RPG that takes place in a futuristic space sci-fi setting. You do not move your character around in an isometric scenario as you do in Disco Elysium or Game Deck. There's a space station where there are places to go and things to do, and you travel between its locations by means of a fast travel mechanic of sorts. Each of these locations consists of a single scenario and an interface screen displaying the things that you can do. And these things you do serve to advance the game's many quest lines or to gather resources such as energy, food, or medicine. These resources are needed to keep you alive and healthy because your energy and your condition decay as you progress through the game. There are three classes for you to choose from in Citizen Sleeper, but it makes almost zero difference which one you choose. Each of them gives you a bonus and a penalty. So there are some activities for which you will get a plus one on your die roll, and some others for which you will get a minus one. And yes, Citizen Sleeper uses dice mechanics to determine your chance of success at these activities. And the better condition you're in, the more dice you get, and a better chance of getting good dice you have. So resource management is far more important than your class of choice. You do level from time to time though. Performing some of the activities in the game will open up drives. These drives are like quest lines, and every time you complete one of these quest lines, you'll be gaining an attribute point. And there's a list of attributes and perks that you can unlock with these attribute points, and those are worth paying attention to. Some activities you'll only be able to perform if you unlock some of these perks, and I think this is pretty cool. Citizen Sleeper mechanics may seem simple, but the game is deceitfully robust and complex, but without being difficult. So don't get me wrong, this is as chillaxy as the game can get. But there is a bit of strategy involved. For example, do you play it safe and engage in activities for which your current dice guarantee a positive or neutral outcome, or do you play it YOLO? Do you focus on staying alive while you save money and resources to mitigate risk, like I always do? Or do you keep your resources at the minimum level and focus on those quest-related activities? And as simple and as easy as it is, Citizen Sleeper's gameplay is brilliant in its design because it revolves first and foremost around its narrative, and this in turn thrives on its multiple quest lines and decision nodes. And the way in which you engage with these activities with dice rolls and stuff that becomes available or unavailable every X number of days, or cycles as they call it here, is just the perfect way to harness all the momentum and thrill of the story's plot points. For example, there is this part in which your relationship with a certain nasty character may turn out one way or another depending on whether or not you decide to do certain repeatable activities to lend him a hand. But if you decide to spend your cycles advancing other quest lines or gathering resources, even if neglecting this repeatable activity may bring negative consequences to you, you may end up having enough resources to mitigate said consequences. Or, depending on how much you've advanced some other quest lines, you may even be able to end the game before this whole deal with this nasty character blows up in your face. Citizen Sleeper puts you, the player, in the driver's seat of the story, and I'm always on the hunt for games that do this, 
and I blame you, Arcanum, and Baldur's Gate 2 for this. And one thing that's great about Citizen Sleeper is that putting you in the driver's seat of the story and the gameplay does not come at the cost of the world not changing in the least as a consequence of your actions, which is one major gripe that I have with games like Skyrim or Mountain Blade. I know, these games belong in a completely different ballpark within the RPG genre, but I've always felt like the one thing these games were missing for me to consider them top tier gold is the decided lack of weight of your actions in the larger scheme of things. But Alex, there is this mod that- Zip it, Gigi Hadid! Citizen Sleeper is a futuristic, sci-fi, dystopian take on the tale of rebirth that we've played through before in games like Disco Elysium or Planescape Torment, even if it goes in a different direction and takes on different themes. You wake up somewhere unknown, not quite knowing where you are or how you got there. So, one of the first things that you have to do is piece together your past so that you can decide what to do next and who you want to be in the world. And this is always a solid case for a story, and it is especially a good choice for a video game, since they are a form of entertainment in which the story is meant to be specially relatable, because it's meant to be your character's story. From then on out, the game plays out a little bit like a concept album that tries to take you through a journey of human growth, from the first cry to the final passing. And I am reminded of this not only because of the narrative, but because of the way in which the game uses its soundtrack, which is quite simply masterful. The game has multiple endings, and one of them is exceptionally sad. The use of music for the entire questline that leads to said ending is beautiful, powerful, and depending on the day you play it, it might even reduce you to tears. Not me, though. The soundtrack in Citizen Sleeper is understated, but it's definitely the secret behind the game's sad mood and the feeling of solitude and emptiness that you experience. But there is something about its composition, like it houses some hope amidst all its sadness. I also think this soundtrack is 100% worth listening to outside of the game. The game starts in total darkness. There are some unfathomable sounds and a sense of numbness, so your first conscious efforts need to be devoted to not dying there and then. But as you regain consciousness and you put numbness behind you, you start to evaluate the situation. You are in a container in an unknown place. With some effort, you remember a bit of who you are and a few things about your recent past. Before you explore your new surroundings, you meet the stranger who salvaged the container you were in only moments ago. He tells you a bit about where you are and how you got there. But it's not information dumpy, and it also doesn't feel like a convenient exposition because the man is kind of used to seeing people like you. You are one of many human synthetic hybrids on the run from the corporation known as Essen Arp. You are called a sleeper. It's interesting that the fact that it takes some time to learn the ins and outs of the game adds to the immersion aspect of the experience because you're also a bit lost about the specifics of what you have to do. I don't know if this was a happy coincidence or if it was by design, but it worked beautifully for me. What you do know is why you have to do whatever it is you have to do. You are one of many human-machine hybrids who went rogue and escaped as an ARP, the company who builds your body. It is hinted at that s and Arp and other corporations created such degrading living conditions for humans across the galaxy that people like you had little choice but to sign some contract to participate in gruesome experiments, like the one that ended with your mind and conscience being imprinted upon the synthetic construct you now inhabit. But as soon as you find your legs and start to walk about your new reality, you acquire the notion of time. At first, you're kind of waiting for someone or something to show you the way. But soon it's the time left what starts to matter, rather than time itself. The time left before as an ARP finds you, or the time left before you seize that final opportunity to make it out of the station, if that's what you intend to do. And that's when you rush, because no one told you when to run. You miss the starting gun, so to speak. That's what Erlen's Eye Space Station is, really. It's never boring up there. There are hippie colonies concerned with the station's sustainability, bars, pubs, gangster factions, and it's up to you to decide what to do and for whom. While you wait for things to happen, or as you try to make them happen, you'll have to find a way to survive in Erlen's Eye Station, and that means not running out of energy and not letting your body decay any further. And you're going to need money for that, of course. So grab that cash and make a stash because you are going to need it. You'll also need money to buy things that are needed for some quests and to unlock certain areas of the station. There are factions in the game that will let you know that if you're going to live in Erlen's Eye, at some point you're going to have to choose a side. It's us or them. And of course, they're all going to say that their way is the only way to run a tight ship and preserve order. 
Citizen Sleeper handles its lore in a smart way. Every piece of information you come by about the station's history, its factions and its people adds gravitas to your decisions, be them as strategic and as important as what you want to do with your life, or as mundane as the things you do for money. Erlen's Eye is an abandoned station that was founded by idealists who were trying to create a place that would serve as a haven for those trying to escape the oppressive corporate authoritarianism in the galaxy. It's somewhat chaotic, some parts are a bit unruly, and corporations are also gaining ground. But there are a lot of good people and most individuals are trying to do the best they can with what little they have. Erlen's Eye is a place that's seen better days, but if you choose to stay there, it'll become an opportunity for you to do something worthwhile with your life. Some say a good life is one in which you devote yourself to leaving the world in a better state than you found it. If you're one of those people, you'll never run out of things to do in Erlen's Eye. But if you want to leave the station to forge your own future, break the corporate chains of oppression, and stop playing someone else's games, there are some quest lines for you to follow. And they are beautifully written. Typically, you meet an NPC. You have to earn its trust, because that's how people operate in every universe, be it medieval, sci-fi, or otherwise. Once you earn their trust, and once you have shown them through your actions and dialogue choices that you are a like-minded individual, some of them may ask you to join them when their big break comes. And that's what makes the culminations of the most important questlines in the game feel deserved, weighty, and even touching. There's an investment of time, often money, and even of the emotional kind. This is especially true of the questlines that lead to the game's many endings. Speaking of which, none of them will leave you indifferent. And that takes us to one of my favorite things about Citizen Sleeper. When you complete one of the game's many endings, after the credits roll, you'll be taken back to the main menu and you'll still see the continue button. Choosing to continue after you have finished the game will take you to the moment right before you make that critical decision, which means that you can choose to bail out and continue to navigate the game until you find another end. The game doesn't follow a strict canonical path, it has many endings and doors will open and close as a product of your decisions, and I think this is quite remarkable. The game also does a pretty good job establishing that regardless of which of these paths you choose to travel, regardless of the goal you decide to pursue, you're going to end up, well, cosmic dust. That final piece of narration you get in every ending makes this abundantly clear. Choose any color you want, they're all blue. Citizen Sleeper is a delicacy if we judge it by its story and lore. A little bit like the fancy crab salad corks won't ever shut up about. But I'll tell you one thing, crab salad? Not my thing. Nah, -uh. Whoever invented it didn't have me as their target audience in mind. But hey, I'd be an idiot not to acknowledge that it is a delicacy even if it's not for me. I think Citizen Sleeper is a crab salad. Crab with a B. Why? I just think it appeals to a different audience. The game's idea of dystopia came off to me as so infused and way too milk toast, and their idea of criminal bands and badass mercenaries were laughable, to put it mildly. Also, the game addresses some modern day social talking points that I couldn't care less about. It takes a not so subtle jab at capitalism, and it presents us with characters whose attitudes don't seem to match their upbringing, their past, or their context. But despite all that, Citizen Sleeper gets a solid Yo Gamer Records nod, because these guys from Fellow Traveler know their shit and they take it seriously when it comes to writing. The game makes a very strong initial case with the premise that you are an organic synthetic hybrid who escaped the corporation who owns your body. During its initial passage, you even struggle to exert full control over your thoughts. You find yourself thinking, there's someone in my head, but it's not me. And from then on out, you are in the driver's seat of your own story. It is up to you to decide what to do about the corporation that's all hell-bent on reclaiming what they believe is their property. It's up to you to decide the kind of life you want to live and whether or not you want to play other people's games. It's up to you to decide the place you want to call home. Citizen Sleeper even provides you with a questline that leads you to an end that is most grim, one that I felt represented ending things ahead of time. If you have had such thoughts, you'll know what I'm talking about when you get there. And it even makes the subtle point that any other ending, even if it means living in a city that's meant to be hell on space, although they fail to depict it in such a way, is preferable to ending things ahead of time. But end they will all the same. And even as so infused as Citizen Sleeper might come off as from time to time, it does not shy away from this universal truth. And all that is now will be no more at some point. And Citizen Sleeper makes it abundantly clear that all we have to do 
is to decide what to do with the time that's been given us. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thank you for watching all the way up until now. If you like what you're seeing in this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to avoid the usual YouTube shenanigans. Share the video, but most importantly, never stop gaming, but don't let gaming get in the way of your hopes and dreams. Bye, everyone.